and we'll now live. The Hartford City Council uh, May 26 meeting 5 p.m. All right, we'll have a invocation to start our meeting. Father, I give you thanks for today, for every day that we have of life, Father, and just thank you that we can meet and carry on the business of Hartford. We just pray for your guidance in all that we do and say. Father, we want to remember certain individuals. I know David's father is having surgery, and just pray, Father, for success there, that you'll guide the doctors and others, comfort him and all his family, Father, and pray for him. The Renfro family, Father, that you'll just continue to comfort them and just uh, daily may they gain strength and peace and just thank you for your presence. Just ask you now for your presence here in our meeting. Pray these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Uh, Ms. It says visitors. we have any visitors tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, well, um, we'll let you have the next uh, two minutes. Okay, I'll, no. I'll talk fast. Um, Thank you all for letting me be here. I'm Joanna Shake um, with the Green River Area Development District uh, out of Owensboro. And I've been here a couple of times. Um, every year when the, now that COVID is, well, mm, well now that I could have this brief opportunity to get out, um, when time changes and it gets daylight, I tried, and my goal is to make it to all 27 of my cities. And so um, I have to do it before the time changes again in November because it gets dark and I can't see well when that night when I drive. So um, I appreciate you all letting me be here. Really, I'm just here to listen, want to collect the community needs, I'm really interested in what your top five uh, priorities are, simply because the more I know about your community, I can take it back to the office and talk to our team and we can find resources for you, um, find grant opportunities. So yeah, I'm just here to say hello. Uh, we are your extended staff, the mayor knows that. Um, We're just here to serve our communities and to help any way that we can. So I appreciate you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I told um, the man I was talking, she said there's monies available in a grant to go towards this water tower project. So I, I think it would be best interest if we can go forward and go after that grant to better set the cost on that. Talking about the uh, additional funds, previously it was Senate Bill 36. The monies that was uh, divided among consensus by all the utilities, you all got together and decided what, how to divvy up those funds. The legislature put additional monies in this year. Uh, same calculation, same methodology, uh, based on population divided among all the, all the 120 uh, counties. Um, you'll come together again with your fellow uh, utilities and just decide how you want to divide those funds among the projects. So it's a little more than last time though. Uh, last time they reserved monies for cost overruns and for um, not agreed orders, but um, oh, there was like five or six across the Commonwealth that they pulled monies out. So it's going to be a little, a little more money, so that's good. Um, so definitely those will be coming down uh, the pipe. And Chayton Pendley from our squad, Ohio County Native, uh, does our water sewer project. So be on the lookout for an email from Chayton, and he'll be able to give you more details. What's the deadline on the one that I was talking about, the water tower project? Is there a deadline? On well, that, we're talking about the Senate Bill 36? Yeah. Uh, same like last time, once you uh, decide, once the community, all the communities meet and decide, uh, it's just a simple getting the application in. It mirrors the state revolving loan fund, the SRF. You all have dabbled and utilized those funds before too, so it's, you complete the package, pass a resolution, get it up to Frankfurt, KIA will issue a uh, grant agreement, and then you can start. So. This is a Pure grant or matching grant? No, it's, it's just grant like last time. When the lieutenant governor came down, it is a second pool, second wave of those funds. Legislature put some more money into it, so um, it's, it's going to be identical to last time. I can keep up with all the money coming down. Oh, mercy. It's it's quite a bit, and it is overwhelming at I need times. need to be brushed up on it. <laughs> well, then call on us. That's what we're... That's exactly right. What, what, makes, what makes our job easier, um, we could come here and tell you about all sorts of grants, but it's just much easier if we know what you need money right. for and what your priorities are, and then we can match that need with resources. What about, in connection with the water tower, what about that second active flow system that they want? You're talking million dollars there. Well, <laughs> well and you all have utilized block yeah. grant before. 
um, the CDBG funds quite successfully. Hartford has in the past. USDA has a grant loan combination. The only thing is you've got to take the loan to access the grant. Um, so there's a variety of funding sources out there. Do we just need to kind of define the project and then decide um, what when is best your, for you? When will the community's meeting be? Do they all come together and meet? or? Uh, Skylar Stewart did, did the last one, if y'all remember last summer. We, we got these in last June, so it was a year ago that we had the first meeting and Skylar came out and met. Blake might have been with her uh, to determine that. So when we get the green light from KIA, we will call and say, are you all ready to have that discussion and select your projects? That might be good. Mm -hmm. It'd be in the next month or so, I'd okay. say. Yeah, the funds won't be ready until July 1st anyway. So it, first couple weeks of July, yeah. Okay. That'd be good. I, I mean, I'll speak up since she brought up a topic about what your goals are. Do you remember when we paid KLC to do that strategic planning thing and they came one time and then COVID hit and we haven't seen them again? Whatever happened there? Hmm. Do what now? I'll say it again. That strategic planning issue thing? It's still on the back burner. Uh -huh. we, we backed off because of COVID. I know. That's and what, it's still I mean, there. That would be helpful to kind of... Oh, yeah. They've they they checked, they be checked with me yeah. just yeah. in the last month. Uh, Bobby's gone. She's retired. And now uh, Ted's taken over. And so he called me the other day just to, just to touch base. You know, want to know where we are. And I'm saying, well, as soon as we, you know, people feel comfortable enough, we'll get together and have that meeting and all. But, because, I mean, you're coming up on a new fiscal year, now would be kind of a good yeah. outline. Mm -hmm. Even right. your land and water grants. So I was sharing with both before the meeting started, we have on our webpage a grants opportunities page that has just an icon, whether it be recreation, small business, oh my goodness, waste management, just a gamut. And so this is a resource that you all can... Um, utilize too. It's not as comprehensive as we'd like. We're still building it. We just can't keep up, like you said, we can't keep up as fast as everything's hitting us, but we're, we're doing our best trying. But um, yeah, if there's something that we can investigate for you, housing, water, small business, downtown development, um, we'd be glad to assist. That's what we're here for. I mean, that's, that's why we're here. So what thought when you said housing, what might that look like? Oh, what would okay. fall under like public housing uh, okay, so developments. Kentucky Housing Corporation is a huge resource. Uh, I'm going back 20 years, guys. We were involved with Horse Branch, uh, those five houses uh, out that way. That was supposed to be a bigger development um, years ago. Bob Black, I can't even remember. We, we bought the fiscal court, had, and that was going to be a big subdivision. So we can do subdivisions. We can do... Um, We've done scattered site housing uh, here in the county where if you have dilapidated houses, uh, the only requirement is you be income eligible and you own the property. Come in and tear down and rebuild the house for income eligible folks. Uh, we've done projects like that. We can do multifamily apartment complexes. There we'll need some assistance with pretty much a, a developer who knows what they're but doing. the city has to own these properties, right? Not necessarily, okay. uh, because that developer can take advantage right. of some tax credits that will help them to, um, yes, for, you're correct, for some, the city would have to own, but others, not necessarily. It just depends on what the project is and the scope. Uh, we have done, uh, first, uh, we can connect with Folks are buying their home for the first time for loan origination. I mean, it just, it's, it's. Big. Do you all still do some of the subsidized loans like they used to? With the, well, it's Green River Housing, I think, at one time. No, we don't do yeah. those anymore. But yes, we did those there for three years. One of them is like the senior living over there on Rochester Road that they built. That, they was part of that. We that's Auburn Village? area, yes. too, yeah. 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 So that's part yeah. of that. We've, yeah. Um, yeah, you with housing. There's a lot of housing insecurity oh. in here in Hartford. <laughs> we find that a lot of places, uh, <laughs> just not a lot of housing <laughs> stock. Right. There's, and well, so people move to Owensboro, or they move to Henderson, people, or they move to a bigger mm -hmm. city, and we're losing our rural people. To Homeowners and renters don't want to do Section 8 anymore. There's no Section 8 properties available for income based Qualified. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and what I've seen in a, a community in Webster County, that people are coming in and as people pass or the, they move, they're buy, build, 
buying up all these houses and then turning them into rental. Mm -hmm. And so the community is losing its identity. Nobody owns the house anymore. Mm -hmm. Nobody is at stake. It's transient. They come in, they live for a couple months or a couple years, and then they leave. So there's no um, community identity, and it's just so sad to see that. Mm -hmm. Centertown's kind of suffering a little bit from that right now. Yeah, people buy these houses, and they rent them out, and... It's just not, not the same. So the assistance that you all provide, though, is it not the same parameters as Section 8 housing? Where you no, we, we, okay. we don't do Section 8. Um, mm-hmm. But we can certainly, again, with Kentucky Housing Corporation, who is a Section 8 um, lender, provider, partner, um, we're very familiar with them. And so we can, if we can't provide the service, we can connect you with the right people, the right resources that can. Okay. Yeah, That's definitely. Good. Appreciate it. Yeah, sure. Thank you all again for letting me be here. Thank you. Any more questions or comments, anybody? Okay, then we'll take a look at the minutes of our previous meeting. Take a look at those, and then I'll entertain a motion. Second. I'll second. All right. Any questions or comments? All in favor? <coughs> Motion carried. All right. Take a look at the financials. Well, let's see. Tara, you're next. You got anything for us tonight? I do, but it's potential litigation. That's yeah. fine. Potential litigation. All right. Okay. Let take- me ask about some of the properties and the tax. It's potential litigation. Okay. Okay, take a look at the financials and see if you have any questions or comments about that. And I'll entertain a motion first and then we'll discuss it. To All right. the financial report. All right, so second. Tony seconded. <coughs> Any discussion, questions, comments? All in favor of accepting the financials report? All right, motion's carried. That brings us down to um, our old business, the second reading of Ordinance 2022 03. That's in there, so somebody read read that ordinance for us, and then we'll take a motion to accept it. I'll read it. All right. An ordinance complying with KRS 243.070 in Section 1, Article 15F of Ordinance 2020-02, the Alcohol and Beverage Control Ordinance to establish an annual alcohol regulatory license fee. It's just something we have to go through every year, set at 5%. Uh, and actually, we're having difficulty maybe spending all the money that's coming in. So, I mean, it's minus some things we, for the police department. We had um, buying five new computers. Does it costs. all have to be um, law enforcement based? Can it be prevention based or? Anything below it, yeah, we can, with the way that it's read, though, that you have that worksheet that you go through, and um, we have it related to alcohol-related offenses, so anytime they do, like, um, traffic stops or there's alcohol related to um, any of the calls they make, whether it's domestic violence or anything, if alcohol is related to that, that kind of counts towards something because it's an impact on the community. Okay. So anything like that, if, they're, if our police force is keeping track of it, helps mm-hmm. us document 
uh, what we can for the what we can uh, do to help charge or help words, but, but help calculate that percentage. Okay. You know, it helps pay for payroll for one officer. It helps. It will help. What is twenty percent? We'll be able to use for a new car. You know, stuff like that in the future. So. Okay. Any other questions about the ordinance? Okay. Motion to accept the ordinance. Motion. Mayor Bill. I second it. All right, Jerry. Any comments, questions, discussion? All in favor of adopting the ordinance. All right. Motion's carried. All right. Brings us down to new <coughs> business. Uh, first thing is fiber optic right away. We've had a request or from a company that wants to put in fiber optic and it's going to run down Main Street and then it's going to go up Old Main Street to the hospital. That's what it's going to do. That's it's going to fork. Pardon? Just, it will fork? Yeah. It'll be just a, uh, they just, it's a right of way that it's mostly going to be elevated. It's going to be on poles. Really, it won't be any effect to us. So, they're attaching to existing poles. It's for fiber optic lines. They're going to attach to existing utility poles coming down Main Street, a little bit on West Center, and then going up Who's towards doing this? What's company? It's a company called Excelicom, but they're part of the whole Kentucky Wired Open uh, Open Fiber project. Um, I've been in contact just today, even with one of the project managers because there was a little bit of confusion. Somebody sent us a whole lot of site plans and not a lot of information asking what they needed from the city. and There was a lot of confusion back and forth. And essentially, they're going to be a broadband provider, but um, and Joanna may actually be able to answer some of this. I think they might even fall under the telecom uh, aspect of it. So there, I've sent them um, the last franchise agreement that the city has entered into with one of our other providers, and they're supposed to be getting me a draft. But it would basically, the issue is they want something on record in the city minutes and we would also put it in the franchise agreement where you all authorize them to work within city right of ways in order to maintain and install these fiber optic lines. Why are they going over overhead? Why don't they go underground so it will be preserved? It's a hell of a lot more expensive. Well. And some of it will be actually. There are in the plans some of it is built in to be underground especially when they're crossing Main Street. I think they're going to in some areas. Especially what? When they're crossing Main Street in some areas and when they're going up towards the hospital. But I mean, the the you know the infrastructure is already there for overhead lines. So down we're going down. the cheap route. The first time the line goes down, we're all down. Downtown, everything's Basically, concrete, right. though. Huh? Everything's concrete downtown. So <laughs> you, you, can you, you stick a wire under there and see how hard it is. <laughs> well. You, you, <laughs> Fellas, I, I know what you're saying, but I also know it can be done, and I, I just hate They're not to asking see. any money from us. They're just asking to get this. I know. Yeah, I just hate to see it because it's going to get everybody's hopes up, and, and the next storm we get blowing through here, the lines are going down again. Makes sense to put it underground to me, but... I don't have any say over that. They've already got their engineering done. Yeah. It's a shame they didn't come in hummingbird and ask me. I'll, I'll, I'll pass along your contact information. <laughs> you can do that. I'll make my motion. Top of the list. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. All right. Any more discussion? Mm -hmm. No. All in favor of granting the right of ways to this company, thank you. Motion's carried. Cut off the discussion. Well, I will say that you <laughs> probably are going to be presented with a franchise agreement and that I'll forward that to Lisa at the next meeting that they're going to ask to be, and I'll get that to you as soon as I have that. Okay. okay. Um, the only other business I've got is uh, there has been a request by the hospital while they're doing all their construction that we replace the water line on Gillespie after talking with an engineer. It's a four inch line. Uh, it's not enough for all the residents and the hospital and it's new addition and all. So I recommend putting in an eight inch line and uh, it'll be from Clay Street to Old Main Street. Um, the initial, the engineer's first initial estimate was a, a little over 157,000. Um, we asked Luttrell to take a look at it. Um, 
what they came up with is like 106,000. I mean, that's not uh, a bid on their part. Of course, that, of that amount, we'll have to bid it. But um, I think, you know, we're talking a little over $100,000 just to replace that. It's about uh, 1,000, about 1,100 feet of, of pipe and a few valves here and there and things like that. So. Will uh, the residents be required to tap into that? <coughs> yeah, we'll, everybody will be on that eight inch line. Probably. And that cost is all inclusive of that too? Yeah. Okay. The, um, they'll cap, there's a three inch line and of course the four inch line that's already in Gillespie. We've had so much trouble with that. So this is going to be a, uh, a welcome uh, replacement. Which side of the street does that run down? It, it's on the hospital side of the street. Okay. Uh, that's where the old lines are. I presume that's where they put the new ones. But then once they put those in, uh, they were going to go ahead and put black topping in their bed, and we said, well. Don't worry about the black top and let's just see what we can put it in for right now and, and so it's gonna be roughly about a hundred and hundred six, hundred and eight thousand. Uh that was just an estimate. You know, when they submit their bid, uh they, they might make it a little more competitive, I don't know. He was just doing some rough calculating, so that gives you an idea of what the ballpark is. But I'd like for uh Permission to go ahead and and uh, ask for bids on replacing the water line on Gillespie Street. Somebody make a motion and where do you, where do you want to take it from? Uh, there's an eight-inch line on on Clay Street, right in front of where Jerry Scoggins is. Where they'll That's connect right. on the same on the left side of the road, right? Well, it, it'll be yeah, it'll be on the Jerry Scoggins side of the street. That's where that line is. And I guess you want this to come I mean, out. That's of, what I believe they told me. It was on that side. You want this to come out of general? Uh, you want this to come out of general? Is that what you're Well, requesting? we can actually take it out of uh, occupational tax because that was set aside for infrastructure. You know, that, that's... Okay. But you're not spending anything right now. You're just asking the you're asking Right, for yeah, I'm just asking. Bid. Right, I'm not asking for us to accept a bid yet. I'm just asking for the permission to receive bids on that project. I'll make I'll a make motion it. in. Okay. In a second. second. Okay. All right. Any discussion Please. about it? First, you second. It's a, I mean, we've been out there replaced, worked on that line. It's just all up and down the street. It's rotten and, and uh, Like a lot of others in Hartford. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This gives you some kind of idea. I mean, 1,100 feet is going to cost us over right. 110,000. So, you got any money to fill in on that? <laughs> see. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then if there's no more discussion, I'll in favor. I got one thing. Okay. Um, I've looked that up on the mirrors and stuff. Oh, no, I'm talking about the motion. To oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Street. Yeah. All right. Okay. Sorry. All in favor of asking for bids on Gillespie Street. All right. Thank you. Motion's carried. Now then, yeah. go okay. ahead with your mirrors. So, Popular Spring South, um, they requested, and I went out there and looked. What it is, they're wanting to have a mirror out there so they can see coming in and out of that road. And there's probably Where's Popular Springs. My house. In, end of Emory Woods Drive. And so there's probably like five houses back there, and it's just a straight know. shot. Mm -hmm. So I'm requesting, I've I seen them, and I'll get the catalog if we get approved. We just need to get a pole. It's $189 to purchase, and we can just stick the pole on the mirror. And How big is it? Do you remember? Uh, I don't know. It's the biggest one they had. Okay. So. The problem is you have to pretty much all, pull all the way out into Embry Woods before you see any cars coming from down the road. Yeah, and the other day I just hey, got side so It's not like it's a parade or anything. Right, exactly. You, you would I think, mean, you know, you no, know, but we've had we've had a lot more people move back there <laughs> lately. So where are they moving? 
Well, it's just they're a couple with a bunch old, of young kids, and they got people coming and going all the time. Young people. They're redoing people. that old house at the end of the street. They fly in and out yeah. on a mountain dew. Mm-hmm. And we have golf carts and everything else all the time, too. And then, uh, yeah, no, we can't do anything about the golf carts, that's for sure. They're all over the place. No, I don't say nothing about the golf carts. Yeah, don't bring them up. <laughs> but that's all I got, so I'd like to see if we can get that. All and right. I'll bring the catalog to Lisa to yeah, get it ordered fine. or whatever. It will cost, it'll cost enough to require council approval. So, And then there's, um, what is that road to the left? Before? Popular Springs. That's Popular Springs. Mm-hmm. Somebody messaged about some leaves in the... That's on, that's on some private property, I think. It's probably it's what it is. It's right next to the road. I'm not sure what the right of way it? width is there, but... Somebody rake leaves up to the fence, and then the ones on the other side of the fence, they just left, you know. Okay. So Where is this? Is it the Rouse? On Poplar Springs. Well, it looks like, they show me a picture of yeah, it. Yeah, I've seen it. Okay. Let me see. Oh. I'm not sure what the right-of-way width yeah. is there for the road, okay. how much is city property and how much is private property. But if the landowner had taken a little more interest in raking his leaves, he might have. Right. We'll take a look. We'll take a look at it and see what uh, whether it's on us or on them. Okay. Anybody else have anything tonight? Okay. Then I'm going to ask that we go into a closed session. No, what's that? Thank you all again. Thank okay. You for you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Find time out of your busy schedule to meet with us. Oh, I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity. This is the fun part of the job. Getting to go out and visit with everybody. So. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, you all have a good night. All right. You Thank Careful. you. Are you looking for any action? Come back any time. Oh, I will. Thank you. Uh, We've got one other thing here. Um, I've got one other thing. One other thing. Um, we just have to pass a resolution saying that uh, you're authorizing me to accept the $744,000 that we got from the governor just recently. So, yep. motion. Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Thank you. Motion carried.